What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here, as always, on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to be discussing from 2011, Overtime, starring Al Snow, John Wells, Sabrina Scott, Erica Goldsmith, James Tackett, and Katie Stewart. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me here yet again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the intro, today I'm going to be discussing Overtime, starring Al Snow. And this one was a fun action flick, you know, with a little bit of like zombie alien type of creatures that they were fighting it wasn't a straight up horror film for sure it was definitely more sci-fi action but it was it was interesting it wasn't what i was expecting from somebody like al snow i mean granted the little poster here does say aliens zombies and cake but For Al Snow and what we know of him as a wrestler, I would have expected more of a comedy feature as opposed to an action sci-fi type of endeavor. But nonetheless, this is what we got, and let's get into it. And our film begins with a man named Dennis Goodman and his lawyer, Samantha, and they're coming out of a courthouse Dennis has just been found not guilty of murder amongst some other minor charges. Dennis appears to be one all around bad guy. Like the media totally thinks he should have been locked up, that he was guilty. But his lawyer did her job and got him off the hook. He goes to a house after an encounter with the media, probably his doesn't really give us the information maybe his hideout his lair if you will but in any event he goes to a house and he finds his friends there having a party and at first he's a little bit miffed that you know there's this party going on and he didn't know anything about it but he just got out of jail you know he got off his trial he's down to party and celebrate who wouldn't be right so during the party, Rafe, that's Al Snow's character, and his partner Max interrupt the party. And they begin fighting, shooting the place up, killing the majority of the associates, the henchmen. Dennis ends up fighting with Rafe, you know, hand to hand. And Rafe kills Dennis. By snapping his neck. Just as the fight ends. Rafe's phone rings. And it's his wife. She needs him to come home. And look at the garage. So when he gets home. His daughter. Barely speaks to him. Says maybe like two words. As she storms out. And that's pretty much the last we see of her. The whole movie. And. Max hops onto the couch and begins playing video games with Rafe's son, Jimmy. Now, after cleaning up and bandaging his wounds, Rafe tries to get a little fresh, you know, with his wife. She doesn't want any part of that. She's not having it. Rafe has been driving her crazy lately, annoying her. So she's not going to give him any special attention. Apparently, Rafe has forgotten that it's Jimmy's birthday. And it takes his wife, you know, kind of like nudging to Rafe and then over to Jimmy for the connection to be made. So he catches some crap from his wife about it. Rafe, of course, you know, being the husband that he is, he promises his wife that he'll make it right. So they leave, and Max and Rafe go to see 
Samantha, Dennis's attorney. We find out that Rafe and Max basically work for Samantha. She defends these criminals and gets them off in their trials. And then they go in and kill them. Little vigilante justice, you know. That way she makes her money as a lawyer defending them, getting them off. But then justice still gets served because they get killed. So Samantha pays Rafe and Max for killing Dennis and then gives them another assignment. Rafe's wife calls again and tells him to get a clown for the party. Now, Jimmy is, I'm guessing here, but I want to say he's between about 10 and 12 years old. He's old enough for video games and to be pretty into the video games. So it kind of catches me personally off guard that, you know, he would want a clown for his birthday. But alas, to each their own, right? So Max starts calling all the agencies around to book a clown. But it's the day of. Everyone's booked. Rafe and Max go to an electronics store to try to get a gift for Jimmy. Now, Rafe has always already bought a leather jacket for Jimmy. And Max is giving him some crap for it. Like, nobody gives clothes for a birthday. You know, how many birthdays did you have where you opened up a package and it was clothes and you were happy? No one's ever happy with clothes. So they go to this electronic store and they're going to try to get Jimmy the brand new Y box. The Y box 720. Yes, it's a knockoff of the Xbox 360. The problem, though, is that it doesn't get released until the following day. So the associate, who's the assistant manager, gives Rafe crap. He's not going to sell it to him because he can get in trouble for selling it before the release date. They go back to the car. And a bum begins trying to wash their windshield. Max has an idea. He offers this bum $50 to dress up like a clown for the party. And the bum's like, dude, $50? All right, cool. So he jumps in the car and he goes off with them. But first, they still have to take care of this assignment that Samantha gave them. So they arrive at the address, and things feel kind of weird when they first get there. They're looking for a man named Greg Chambers. Instead, they find a man named Kyle. Then out of nowhere, a couple of zombie-type creatures jump out and attack Rafe and Max. So they go on the defensive unsure of really what is going on here. While investigating the situation, they find a group of individuals, there's about six of them, who are trying to survive the ordeal themselves. One of which just happens to be Greg Chambers. Greg Chambers is the target. So Max is about to draw his gun, shoot Greg so they can get out of there, you know, completing the assignment, but Rafe kind of gives him the, you know, hold on, hold on hand gesture there for a minute. You know, see what's going on here. One of the creatures tries to kidnap Monica, who's one of the women in the group. So Rafe, Max, and a couple of the others that have guns begin shooting, trying to kill the creatures. Rafe and Max end up getting separated. Rafe is with Greg and Stephanie. Max is with Monica and one of the others. Greg admits that he has been using the blood of these creatures to experiment. 
their blood is referred to as NTF. He thinks this NTF can be used to cure brain disorders. You know, things like Alzheimer's, amnesia, dementia, strokes, all these type of things. He believes their NTF can be used to help heal these things and get rid of these problems. But this upsets Samantha because she feels she can no longer trust him because they had not agreed to test on humans yet. So they make a plan to go to the freight elevator. The freight elevator will take them to the control room. And once there, they want to activate the halon and suck the oxygen out of the air. This will prevent the monsters from bonding with other humans, thus growing their species and surviving. So they're going to go up there. They're going to set a timer, giving them a chance to escape the building before the activation of the halon begins to suck the oxygen out because we breathe oxygen too, and so do they. So if the halon starts getting sucked out of the building, they won't be able to breathe, but neither will we. So we've got to give a few minutes timer so that we have a chance to escape. You know what I mean? On the way to the elevators, one of the creatures grabs Greg. Max, Rafe, Monica and Stephanie managed to make it to the control room and they find Dr. Bolland. And Dr. Bolland refers to these creatures as her babies. She is ground zero, if you will, for these monsters. Rafe tells Stephanie and Monica to set the timer, begin the halon release and then to meet him downstairs in five minutes. Rafe tracks Bolin down and confronts her, fighting off some of the creatures in the process. Rafe kills Bolin, while Stephanie, Monica, and Max kill more of the monsters, and then they run to escape the building, thinking it's going to blow. But Stephanie tells them, you know, that's not how Halon works. It doesn't make the building explode. It just sucks the oxygen out the air. So once they're all safe and sound out of the building, Rafe still has a party to go to. His son's birthday party. Monica and Stephanie take off one way. Rafe and Max leave. And Rafe returns to the electronics store punches the assistant manager in the face, grabs the Y box, and just strolls right out of there. They then go to one of those self-car wash places, you know, where you put in like a buck and it gives you the big hose that sprays the soap and the water and everything. They strip down to their underwear and hose each other off so that they can clean all the blood and alien guts off of them. They get changed into fresh clothes. And then Max takes the bum, who has been in the car the entire time all of this has been going on with the creatures. He begins to dress him up like the clown, giving him instructions about what to do when you get there. You know, you're a bum. You're going to see a lot of nice things your first reaction is going to be to try to steal some of these things. Don't do that. We'll have to kill you. Go in there, be funny, make some balloon animals, you know, do some flips and somersaults, be a clown. Now, as they're getting ready to arrive at the party, Rafe's wife is asking Samantha where he is. What is he doing? When will he be here? And Samantha tries to lie 
And Rafe's wife is like, you know, I've known you for too long. You can't lie to me. Just when she's about to tell her where Rafe is, Rafe and Max show up. Got a gift in one hand, cake in the other hand, because that was one of the other things his wife called him about was picking up a cake. So gift in one hand, cake in the other hand, clown behind him as him and Max stroll up. Totally saves Rafe's butt with his wife impresses her to no end she even has to admit you know that he did really good this time during the party you know the clown's doing his thing rafe and his wife are good max is kind of chilling monica shows up max is like what are you doing here how did you find me and she kind of gives a nod off to the other corner, and there's Stephanie. And the two of them tracked Rafe and Max down. Monica, Rafe, and Stephanie then all walk off arm in arm. And then in our epilogue, we find out from Max that he had a threesome with them that day as our movie ends. Like I said, this was definitely an interesting film. I didn't really know what to expect going into it. You know, again, granted, the poster says aliens, zombies, and cake. But not once do they call these creatures zombies. That's why I just referred to them as creatures, monsters, etc., and there was quite a bit of comedy in this film, don't get me wrong. But I would have expected a Adam Sandler, Will Ferrell, Kevin Hart, Jim Carrey style of comedy flick from Al Snow. Because Al is a funny guy. And while there was a lot of comedy in this, it was definitely more of your sci-fi action thriller. And that's not a bad thing. It's just not what I expected. Al did a great job, though. I am going to give Overtime three and a half out of five stars. I'm surprised I haven't seen or heard of more movies with Al. And honestly, I had never even heard of this one until I was searching on Tubi on my Roku box for movies with wrestlers. You know, looking up Hogan, looking up Piper, looking up Cena, all the ones that you know that have done a lot of movies, Austin, Orton, Triple H. And then I just happened to stumble upon this one, you know, because as you start, you're searching, it starts suggesting other movies you may like. And I guess when it started noticing that I was looking up all these wrestlers, it suggested this one. It was like, okay, Al Snow, add it to my list. So I'm glad I discovered this film. I just hope that there are other Al Snow films out there for me to unearth and watch. If not, it's a shame because he did do a good job in this film. Let's get out there on social media, everybody. Get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And of course, the ever popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, 
as well as the red and gold Michamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade JJ Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Don't forget to do what that commercial just said. Go out there to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network. Get you your official Jeff Meacham Network t-shirts, your logo t-shirts, Talk Wrestling, Wrestling Rewind, Meachamania. Get you your shirts of the official Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, your shirt for myself, the renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, hashtag Stat Boy Approved, Dad's Not Always on Wrestling, and more. Tomorrow, right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, also being featured in a replay on the Jeff Meacham Network, I will be bringing another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And I will be talking about the critically acclaimed, something you can't say regularly for movies with and about wrestling, the critically acclaimed The Wrestler. Starring Mickey Rourke, Marissa Tomei, Evan Rachel Wood, and featuring a slew of appearances by other wrestlers. So make sure you're here in the normal time slot, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern, on the Casa D18 Studios channel for that. If you miss it, you'll be able to find it on the Jeff Meacham Network at 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 o'clock Eastern. I hope you tune in to one of those viewings of The Wrestler and see what I have to say about it. Make sure you leave your comments in the comment box below. I will respond to them, and I might even read one on the March 30th edition of Renegade Recap. When I go over and briefly touch on everything I've covered this month, and give you a sneak peek at what's to come in April. Thank you for joining me here, as always, on Renegades Reviews. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy. <laughs>